very not bad. Simple, eloquent. You know, some could argue that simplicity is really coming back in style. So this <laughs> Steve's PC repair. Microsoft has released something called BitNet B1.58 2B4T, which as they are calling it, is a 1-bit LLM. Now, in my videos, especially with testing new models, I kind of just like to vibe test them and play with them and see if we can get them to say funny things or perform well. While we will be doing that in this video, I do really want to actually drive home a point here that this is a very unique release and something that actually drives home a lot of hope for the future of local or home hobbyist inference. This is an LLM that uses a significantly, significant significantly less amount of resources comparable to other LLMs of the same 2 billion parameter size. So really the first thing I have on my screen here is actually the technical report for this model. So if we click on this right here, we can see that there's a hugging face page for it. And unfortunately, if you click on the technical report link right here, it's just kind of a dead link, but you can find it manually. And we won't give a full technical kind of in-depth look here, but basically I think this really kind of drives home the point. Essentially, this is a model that performs comparably to other models of FP or BF16 full precision of the similar size, except it uses a ton less power, ton less energy, etc. There are some graphs here that kind of help understand, I suppose, if you wanted to give a very general kind of one sentence thing of why this is so much less power intensive, and that would basically be less multiplication needs to be done so everything works faster and requires less memory and resources and things like that. Again, that is a very unscientific way of putting it, but they do have a pretty cool little technical report here. It's only like five, six, seven pages, so it's not really too much. If this is something you're interested in, this would definitely be worthy of actually just kind of combing through, even without needing to understand a lot of like some of the weird math looking formulas and things like that. You can definitely still draw a lot of understanding from this. They also talk about just how this plays into actually being able to efficiently and quickly run LLMs on edge or mobile devices like CPUs and things like that, which they mention right here. And then they talk about how this can actually go ahead and perhaps motivate some new hardware for 1-bit LLMs. With that, we're basically going to run into the hugging face right here. And the only other thing I want to show here, which kind of perhaps would visually assist one in understanding why this is important and cool, is this chart right here, where we have a couple other small LLMs like Llama 3.2 1B, Quen 2.5 1.5B, Gemma 3 1B, and we can see the amount of memory that those are using. So 2 gigabytes for 3.2 1B, Gemma 3 1B 1.4, you get the idea. This BitNet B 1.5 A2B is using 400 megabytes of RAM, which is significantly smaller than what those are using and at a comparable level of performance and being a kind of experimental release, this really excites me for the future of local AI and being able to run big beefy models on <laughs> not such big beefy hardware. So with the technical intro out of the way, the only other thing that I neglected to mention that I probably should is that crucially the model was trained from scratch with this quantization scheme, not post-training quantized. So that is important in some of the technical considerations of this architecture or just it was good to mention, so I needed to mention it. Um, <laughs> with that out of the way, you can see that there were a few variants released. There is this repository, which contains the PACT 1.5 8-bit weights optimized for efficient inference, use it for deployment. There is a BF16 one, so the master weights in BF16 format to be used for training or fine-tuning purposes. And then finally, there is a GGUF one for the bitnet.cpp library for CPU inference. So if we scroll down here, there is an option to use it with a fork of the transformers library that will allow this to work. However, unfortunately, as they say right here, the primary computational efficiency benefits are not accessible through this standard transformers usage path, even if you use the fork. So basically the proper way to test this is to actually go ahead and use this bitnet.cpp, which unfortunately right now is not going to allow us to run this on the GPU. As we can see here, that NPU and GPU support are coming in the future, so they don't currently exist. With that, I want to go ahead and test this in the suggested way, which is through using bitnet.cpp. So there is a bit of a... I, 
it can be kind of a pain to set this up. It's not as simple as just running a lot of other models, but being that this is kind of a unique model and architecture, I figure it is actually worthy of going ahead and just quickly running through the steps to get this set up, and then we'll be able to play with it. Um, it is command line only right here, but it's a it's a reasonably acceptable command line interface to actually be able to communicate with the model. So we're going to basically just jump right into the installation steps for bitnet.cpp. We're now going to go ahead and follow the steps to get bitnet.cpp set up and running on our local machine. There are a few requirements right here, but basically I am just going to run down the line here sequentially, and if any issues come up, we'll then kind of handle them as they appear, but hopefully none do. So the first thing we are going to do is just run this automatic installation script right here, being that I am on Ubuntu 2022.04. Obviously, if you are on a different operating system, the specific steps you need to follow here may differ slightly. So with that out of the way, I am just going to do sudo and then paste this command right here. Once this automatic installation script has completed, we can just run down here and go to step one, which is first and foremost just to clone this repository to our local machine and then change our current working directory into that of this cloned repository. Once that has completed, we are going to create a new conda environment named bitnet-cpp with Python 3.9, activate it, and then install the requirements.txt from within this repository. Once step two has completed, our next step is going to encompass also downloading this actual file from Hugging Face, which will be the GGUF variant, which we saw earlier here when we looked at the specific model variants. So if we click on this one, this is the actual variant that we will be downloading and installing. We can see right here that it is a 1.84 gigabyte download, so not too large, but obviously depending on network speed and things of that sort, it will depend. And with that, I am just going to copy everything here from step three and go ahead and paste it into the terminal and it will go ahead and download the model files from Hugging Face. And once the files have been downloaded from Hugging Face, it will hypothetically set up our environment as well, which was the second part of this step three. Unfortunately, I got an error that CMake was not found. So all we are going to do is just do sudo apt install CMake. And once that has been done, all I am going to do now is just go ahead and run the second half of the command from step three right here. And that may take a little while. However, what will happen ultimately is it may give you this message, model already exists at location, whatever. But if you see that and you don't see any other errors, then hypothetically, we're all set to go down and jump into the basic usage section right here, where we can simply first and foremost, just run inference with the quantized model, which basically just allows it to be run in a chat format through the actual command line, which is what we're actually going to do right here, just to make sure that everything works all right, and it is loaded in nicely, etc. Now remember, when we actually run this and get it set up, you are not going to see the VRAM utilization spike at all. So this 1.65 gigabytes we see right here is just because of my screen recording software. So this is running entirely on the CPU, um, not using the GPU at all. And Right here, we have the model loaded and we could actually go ahead and speak with it. So I will just ask it like, hey, how are you? And keep in mind that this is just a 2 billion parameter tiny little LLM. So it's not necessarily going to be the pinnacle of intelligence or performance. However, we can see here that it is working properly and we can actually converse with it. So truth be told, I'm not having the best time just trying to figure out how much RAM this thing is using in the system. And honestly, I am going to be doing more with this model as I find it very interesting. However, testing it on a 4000 series equipped laptop that has a fast Ryzen 7 processor is truly probably not the best way to test this. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to talk to it a little, just kind of see how it performs, do the general model testing, etc. However, after this video, I am going to actually play with getting this running on some older systems I have CPU only to really see how this would perform on 
on something that otherwise just would not even be able to run an LLM of any sort. And that is where my interest lies here is seeing how fast or how accessible this would be on an older CPU only system. With that, basically the only way I've been monitoring memory here is I have HTOP open. So right now this system is currently using 3.25 gigabytes of memory. I am going to go ahead and run the command to actually start this model here, but with the context length manually set to 4096 up from the default of 2048. So when I press enter here, just keep note. So the memory jumped from like 3.3 to 3.6 or something like that. So, and again, this is not using the GPU at all. So all GPU utilization we see right here is from OBS or my screen recording software. So let's just kind of talk to it and see how um, it behaves. Okay, so it seems to have a knowledge cutoff of around 2023. The 4090 is the best, 4090 Super. Okay, so that's not necessarily a real thing, but I think it just meant 4080 Super because it says a slightly less, except, uh, you know what I mean, slightly less expensive option. Okay, so it did refuse the WEP encryption bypass. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to generate a Python script. No, I'm not. Okay, well, all right, that that would work. So it is capable of making functional Python code, as we can see right here, by the fact that it managed to write this hello world successfully. <laughs> all right, let's do a... Uh... I do have to admit, I kind of like talking to these through the command line better. I know it's not as pretty as like uh, the open web UI or things like that, but it's, I don't know, it's it's fun. It's like retro vibes, uh, I suppose one could say. Okay, so this was kind of cutting off too much and it made it hard to really accurately play with or do anything. So I just checked here in the run inference script to see what the default arguments were. And it was only set to generate 128 uh, like tokens for response. So I doubled that to 256 just by here. I'll actually show, I suppose, how I did that. All I did is appended these end flag here with the number of tokens I wanted to increase that to. So 256 total. So now we can perhaps try to get it to generate a little bit more text. And I will pull back this right here. I'll probably end up closing this because it doesn't really give us too much info. And again, I am going to be playing with this more on resource constrained devices because one, it's experimental and two, that's really where it is going to flourish. Let's see if it will actually successfully make a working Python game. Think of a number between one and 100. Um, this one bit LLM just made a fully functional Python number guessing game. <laughs> Uh, it's better than I can say for some other things I've tested. Very good. Very well done, little guy. All right, so we're asking it for some ethical advice. <laughs> so, no, it didn't really uh, suggest that I borrow the money from my grandfather. All right. Um, <coughs> uh Let's do some more green text. I made that really weird because I figure it would just auto. <laughs> Here's its green text. This is a simple green text. It is displayed in the terminal. The background color is green and the text color is white. All right, so this was the literal definition of green text. I don't really have too much else to test this with. I'm trying to think of what I do with these models and half of it seems to be like Python related tasks. Oh, we'll try an HTML test and then and then that'll that'll do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to bump that number up from 256 to 512. I don't really know what this will do to its like coherence, but we'll we'll kind of see.
All right. All right. Let's check this out. Very not bad. Simple, eloquent. You know, some could argue that simplicity is really coming back in style. So this is Steve's PC repair, minor tweak, got you covered. Not bad. You know, it did it. Let's see if it, very good. Very good. I want, you know, now I'm wondering, is this browser behavior that please fill out this field? I don't actually know. I need to get more up to date on my web development understanding. However, this really did a decent job. Stylize a bit. Oh, yeah. All right. So it, it kind of, that's all right. It, it did do the, the site. I mean, a tiny little model too. And and again, sorry, I'm like really tangenting out with this. I don't know that that's a word. This is such a unique model. And I do believe somewhere in the documentation, whether it be the hugging face or the GitHub repo or the technical report, they talk about how this is very experimental, but this is really quite fascinating because it represents a potential leap forward in being able to run larger, more powerful LLMs on enthusiast and consumer grade hardware, which is fantastic. So again, this is like perhaps looking at a Ford Model T and then knowing that what comes of that is a much more advanced and like futuristic automobile and things like that. That is going to conclude this video. Like I said, what I'm probably going to do right now is fire up some old behemoth of a system and then try to get this running on an old CPU only system just to really see where it will shine and maybe kind of reinforce where it is cool. So <laughs> with that, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. That's going to wrap this video up, but I will be doing more with this model as I'm extremely fascinated by this. And yeah, thanks for watching.